My name is Glenn Scrimshaw. I'm an artist. Um, born and raised in Big River, Saskatchewan. A Saskatchewan boy from, from day one and always, I've always lived in Saskatchewan. I've become fairly well known for my lightning, my lightning paintings, my northern light paintings. Um, it's something I'm really passionate about, my work, and I've, I've painted now professionally for just about 22 years. My lifelong dream was to become an artist. When I say dream, I mean dream. It was so far-fetched. My own dad said, well, son, don't you have to be dead to be, to be an artist, to have your work worth something? You know, so it's kind of been an uphill battle all the way, even, even, even within myself, but it's something I've managed to do. I have lots of fond memories growing up, growing up and drawing. Drawing was always at the center of it. I would draw pictures while sitting watching TV in the evening with family. My mom says when Glenn was old enough to hold a pencil, he started sketching. I got my first oil painting set when I was 12. And I, I remember the first picture I ever painted was a bowl of fruit. And it was the best picture anyone ever painted in the whole wide world. I wish I could find it, you know. The oldest painting I found that I did, I was 14 years old. And I, when I go and have my little talks to schools, or I've been invited to be guest speaker and so on, I actually show slides of that one. It's very simple, a sunset with some, with some power poles, really crude power poles. I was 14 years old that, that I did it. Then when I decided that I was going to be an artist, still I was, I, was doing, I was doing oil paintings, but I was finding the oils were taking too long to dry. There was a big smell in there, and I wanted something different. I was reaching a point where I was feeling restricted by the medium I was using, if that makes any sense. I wanted, I don't want to say I could do better, but I could do closer to what I was chasing, what I was after. I was realizing that the soft pastels were restricting me to what I could do. So I was looking around and wondering what I could do that I could substitute in for the pastels. And I discovered airbrush and the art of masking out the certain main, main items that you want to keep in the picture, masking them out and taking the frisket off and so on. And I adapted with that and then went, instead of ink, I was using paint. And instead of pastels, I was using airbrush paint. So it, it worked out fine. I mean, and that's what I do today. I look at pictures. Lots of times I see potential paintings and I'll take a, a bunch of photographs. And I use photographs for reference in my work. And I'll look at something and it starts to form in my head. It's hard to explain, but I'll think, I want to do a lightning picture. I feel like doing a lightning or what color lightning and then I can visualize a fence post and a tree and this and that. And I start looking through my photos. I have thousands of photographs all categorized and printed in photo albums and I look and I, then I'll put them all up on a drawing on my drawing board and I'll sketch it out. Once I get a picture in my head, then I can away I go and I paint it. And it's funny, each painting holds a part of me. I look at different paintings and they invoke different memories of things that I was going through, wonderful things, sad things, happy things, you know, all sorts of things I was doing in my life. If I start a picture, I don't want to stop. It's like working on my house. I get going and I don't want to stop to paint a picture. No way, I want to get this project finished. I love to finish things. I, I become absorbed in them 100%. You know, so I work, I work really, really hard at, at getting them done. I pay a lot of attention to detail. Number one, because it's inside me and I can't paint. I've tried to paint, I've, I've often joked that when I get my new studio built out here, I'm going to try paint a picture and you know give myself a four-inch brush, and that's the smallest brush I'm going to be able to use. And I get down and start. You know, I say to myself, I'm not going to put much detail in this. The next thing you know, I got the magnifying glasses out and I'm doing it really, really fine work. And I do pay a lot of attention to detail, which has helped me to, to. It's become part of my style. People expect it, and every once in a while, I throw in things. I hide things in pictures. And, you know, there's a lot of things, there's a, quite a few pictures, there's things hidden in them that I don't even talk about because they're private things that I 
It's my way of kind of recording something that's maybe very special to me or whatever. I'll do, I'll do something in a picture where nobody knows but me. And then I forget about it or I remember and I can't remember exactly what I did and I have to find it. And, but I, I do put a lot of hidden things in and let people know to a point. I don't, I've got one out now that has a wheelchair hidden in it and other ones that have grad hats hidden in them and some that have rabbits. Lots of them have rabbits. I love to hide rabbits, especially in winter pictures. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's really fun to watch people try and find them. It's, it's, and it makes it interesting. Well, I did a mural for Duck Lake, and at the time when I was doing the mural for them, Lawrence Lanova was the mayor, and he said to me, you wouldn't inter be interested in moving your gallery down here, would you? And I was from living in LaRange, had a small gallery there. And thought, no. Why would I do that? I'm a northern artist. This is the south. And You know, we were painting 30 feet up in the air, and I was watching how busy Highway 11 was, and, and all of a sudden this building was empty right on the edge of the highway, and I thought, well, if I could get that building and set up an art gallery there, then I wouldn't have to travel. I was traveling all the time. I had a nanny from the Philippines watching my daughters. And, you know, it was stressful being gone from my kids and they were getting bigger and they didn't want me to go. And so it just seemed to be the answer. So I, I took a chance and, and moved to Duck Lake. Being a single dad raising three girls was trying, I'll tell you. <laughs> Dad wasn't very popular some days, but you know, I stuck to my guns and now they tell me that was the best thing I ever could do is, was make them toe the line. Back then I was horrible, but you know, they're like any kids. And I'm really proud of them. I've got one grandson, Ethan, and he's a spitting image of grandpa and his mom when, when, when they were young. It's cool. It's really cool looking down and seeing, you know, like your grandchild. 